as Gunai Kurnai people, we say our land called Warwick. Our waters we call Yanda. Yeah, is Wachabutchan. These three elements are special to us and they are the spiritual life giving resources and forming the basis of our cultural practices. We have a cultural responsibility to ensure that all of it is looked after. The dirt you are on, known as the Latrobe River, is over 20 million years old. So from around Mount Bobble, the water start running all the way down to the Gippsland Lakes. Every waterway and river courses like the veins in our body. We must take care for it and the creatures within it. It's our life source. The Latrobe River, or the Dirt Yuan, as the Gunai Kurnai people have called it for thousands of years, is one of the longest rivers in eastern Victoria. More than 260 kilometres long, it supports plants and animals of major conservation importance, while also providing an essential source of fresh water, connecting the mountains to the Gippsland Lakes. The Latrobe River's year-round water flow attracted white settlers in the 1840s, with the river supplying water for new homes, water that held tin and gold and wealth, water and feed for livestock. And with that came problems. Farming involves a changing of the landscape. Clearing of the landscape does lead to a, a change in both the, the soil quality, but also the waterways themselves. Putting hard hoofed animals into the landscape can have impact on, on the soils and the conditions of the soils and certainly more historically uh, practices of, of getting the stock to water, so enabling uh, stock to go and, and um, drink from the river itself uh, would impact the, what we call the riparian vegetation. As more settlers arrived, the land along the river was quickly taken. Plans were made to turn natural swamps into new land for farming. So all where we're driving now was all a swamp. This was all basically just scrub that was pretty much hard to penetrate and not viable for agriculture. The draining of the Maui Swamp was the first major intervention along the Latrobe River. It was identified in the late 1800s that the available farming land was starting to run short and after some government lobbying it was decided to drain the Maui Swamp. A short time after the completion of the project, downstream landholders could obviously see differences in flow magnitudes. All of a sudden they could see that they were being impacted by what they called at the time nuisance flooding. One method used back then to prevent flooding was to straighten the waterway by cutting off the river's bends, making the river flow faster. By 1985, this method of control was becoming problematic. Because the Latrobe River had been short and considerably the flow itself had sped up and that had compounded the problem of the erosion along the larger sections of the channel between Terralgan and, and Rosedale. The major tasks to stop erosion were rock beaching and armouring on banks that had slumped away, streamside fencing to stop stock from walking up and down the banks and providing an area for vegetation to grow. One ongoing task is to return the bends in the river to slow it back down, which reduces erosion and provides critical habitat. The government funding model started to shift slightly toward caring for the environment and not just providing measure for agricultural purposes. Industry has also impacted the river. Since colonisation of Europeans in the area, the Latrobe River has been seen as a, a working river. The river itself and the catchment has been modified to provide for agriculture and towns as well as industry. And this industry includes power generation. The power generation process itself um, involves extracting water out of the river and all these modifications have led to about a 25% reduction in water in the Latrobe River. We have three very large open cut coal, brown coal mines in the Latrobe Valley, the deepest of which is nearly 200 metres deep. The Morwell River, which feeds into the Latrobe, has been diverted around one mine and through another mine. So 
the, the, the course of the river, the, the channel of the river and also the local water table is, is directly impacted by the, the mine. There's a big transition now away from brown coal to renewable energy and that's why the, um, the dates for closure for all three mines were brought, were brought forward. 100 years of, of coal mining certainly has uh, an environmental impact on the area. There are some environmental impacts for each of the sites, so uh, clearly on, on flora and fauna, surface water, groundwater and emissions to air. Today, one major problem affecting the flow of the Latrobe is the extraction of its water for industrial and urban use and for agricultural irrigation. New growth forest plantations also soak up water before it has a chance to reach the river. You plant new trees, particularly in a plantation when you've got a whole stand of trees that are a similar age, they soak up that water quite quickly as they're growing rapidly in their early stages of growth. The existence of forests will also be impacting the water table and, and the local climate in that area. To succeed in saving the river, the community needs to come together to support the river's health. Our role specifically is to be that conduit between the community and the government. Our river system is the lifeblood for the whole of Gippsland. It starts at Latrobe Valley and it ends at the ocean. Now, right now, it's anemic. And we've got to make sure that the government listens to the people, they know and understand what its needs are. Rivers are, are used nowadays for an economic use for jobs. They don't see it as a healthy environment for you know, mental health, for recreation, for tourism. We want to make sure that there's equal weight for the environment, for economic and for social justice as well, because that's, that's a healthy, holistic river system. There has been some great work done by a range of agencies, organisations and individuals to improve the health of the Latrobe River system in the last 20 odd years. This is a large river though, and there's a huge legacy of degradation over time. And so there's far more action that needs to be undertaken and rehabilitation really does need to be accelerated. One area where work has begun is the rehabilitation of wetlands. A major natural filtering system, the Latrobe system, has large areas of wetlands. The water that comes down through the river systems, it's collecting uh, all sorts of things along its way through the catchment. It's collecting sediments, it's collecting any contaminants that happen to be there. And these have historically included heavy metal contaminants. And one of the functions of the wetlands is to slow the river down uh, and to capture uh, some of these sediments before it, it discharges into the lakes. Uh, the Lower Trobe wetlands are a part of that Gibson Lakes Ramsar site, which immediately tells you that it's internationally significant. So it's, it's home to uh, a lot of uh, threatened and endangered species as well as a lot of native species. In recent years, private organisations have shown an active interest in protecting the Latrobe wetlands. Field and Game Australia is a wetland conservation organisation. It's always been a dream of the organisation to own their own wetland. And we have now about 3,400 acres that we own and manage. We have a volunteer workforce. We've eradicated virtually all blackberry and boxhorn that was on the property. That we're constantly controlling the vermin. We've planted now about 66,000 trees. We do a monthly water watch monitoring program to monitor how successful we've been with the water management. The other thing that's come along with all this is that we've got now the ground mammals, kangaroos, eastern grey kangaroos, swamp wallabies, wombats, koalas, echidnas, by and large, this property would not have had those sorts of animals on it for 50 years. Outside the wetlands, man-made and other changes to the river system saw the decline of important native species. 
One of those species was the Australian bass. The Australian bass is Australia's longest lived freshwater fish with a lifespan of up to 50 years. Unlike European fish such as trout, it does not breed every year. It breeds very episodically on the occasional springtime floods that can occur from 15 to 40 years. We have factors such as drought, climate change, and we have dams that prevent the normal springtime flooding that once occurred. Um, we now know that the last major event was in 1985. That was a long time ago. Work is now being done to bring back the bass. I believe that the headline um, for the Victorian Fisheries Authority is that it will be close to a million bass stocked into the Gippsland catchment. We've had a record stocking, I believe 400,000 this year. To reinstate the Gippsland bass as the dominant fish in our catchment was indeed to be phrased the return of the king. The return will boost the economy and recreational fishing along the Latrobe River. Landowners along the waterways are also discovering the attraction of a healthier river system for ecotourism. I just thought, well, we had something to offer, having the site and this position facing north, sunsets, sunrises, you know, what, what more do you want? So it suits all sorts of groups. Perhaps one of the biggest draw cards we've got is the birds. At different times of the year, um, it's always beautiful. Uh, I, I like the winter perhaps best. You get lovely morning mists, beautiful atmosphere. Doesn't matter if it's raining, it's still beautiful. There's always something to look at, always birds around. A healthy, flowing river also means better produce. One of the key benefits of the Latrobe River is that the catchment for the river is in a high rainfall area. So most of the water that is caught in that high rainfall area actually gets used downstream in the, the bottom end of the Latrobe River where there's a much lower uh, rainfall. So we're able to catch and store water from a high rainfall area in a very consistent manner and actually use that further downstream uh, where the topography of the landscape's better, more suited for irrigation, where it's less undulating, and also the soil type's very well suited. Bug Blitz is a biodiversity education, not-for-profit organisation that's uh, dedicated to raising awareness about the importance of biodiversity and wetlands. And we would have worked with somewhere up around between 40 and 50,000 students. Our philosophy is to get them out into habitats. It's all about hands-on engagement and discovery learning, getting them interested in nature. This morning we found just 20 or so different species of invertebrates. If we kept going, we'd find 60 species. That's hope. We always talk about literacy and numeracy, and in our times now, we need to talk more about eco-literacy, to build an eco-literate citizenry who are then equipped to make better decisions about the future. All sorts of amazing things happen around the river. It's just the lifeblood, the lifeblood of, of our planet, I think. Different species can also teach us about the health of the river, such as the effect dams and extraction have on the water flow. Can you hear that one? It's laughing at that question. Why do we need frogs? Frogs is why do we need humans? Ecology is an amazing thing, interconnected web of all things. Frogs help us understand because they take so much through their skin, they need a vast area to survive the health of a condition of a waterway. What we see around, particularly around the lakes and the change conditions of the availability of water, like an estuary system at times, when the lack of fresh water comes down the systems, particularly through damming of many ways, the salt moves in, the frogs, the freshwater dependent species recede and move right into, right up the waterways and into their refuges. 
when we have the times of the high rains, the water comes back and the frogs disperse again. So the frogs show us the movement of where the fresh water is and that availability of fresh water by their abundance. One of the projects that, um, that I deliver here in the Gippsland Lakes is uh, focused on the Australian pelican. The Australian pelican uh, used to have 10 breeding sites in Victoria and as recently as 2006 that's gone down to just two permanent breeding rookeries in all of Victoria remaining for coastal pelicans. Because we've only got two pelican populations left in Victoria it's critical that we understand what management activities are in place to support the persistence of the birds in the region or whether we need to actually improve uh, those activities throughout the landscape. Uh, and once again, it's, it's what's happening upstream affects what's happening downstream. Just three years ago, West Gippsland Catchment Management did an environmental water release in this area. And virtually within a matter of weeks, I think it was only about three or four weeks, we had the first reported sighting of an Australasian bittern here in the area, which is the first confirmed sighting for about 30 years. West Gippsland Catchment Management were able to monitor the water depth and regulate the water depth to maintain the bird in the area so that if it did attract others, we had a breeding event, um, they would successfully raise chicks while the water was at the right level for them. It's, it's hard not to appreciate a magnificent wetland or waterway. It's an undeniable difference between one that's healthy and, and obviously one that's, that's not so healthy and it doesn't have that same heartbeat as what you see with the environment around us today. The Latrobe River is not immune to the impacts of climate change. Global warming will see sea levels rise and river flows change. This, along with ever-growing demands from towns and cities, agriculture and industry, means that the river's waters need to be carefully managed to ensure a healthy flow. We have a unique opportunity to capitalise on our collective efforts to improve the health of the Latrobe River system from the mountains to the Gippsland Lakes. We need to do that collectively government, agencies, organisations, community and traditional owners. It needs to stay um, happy and healthy with good, strong environmental flows uh, and that's what we'd like to see the outcome as. It's hard not to appreciate a magnificent wetland or waterway when it's in full health. It's alive, its heart is beating, there is birds, there is frogs, there is beautiful flora. There's so much to embrace about it. Just growing up around there and learning how to swim at Tom's Bridge. It was um, always good to go out with family and, you know, getting chucked in the water and having that, you know, special connection there. And just making sure also to look and care for the river for the future generations. There's a real sense of optimism and hope amongst the community that we can give back to a river which has given so much. And that will mean that we can turn this valued river system from a working river to a river that works again. West Gippsland Catchment Management Authority is committed to a better future for the Latrobe River. And your support can make a difference. If you would like to be part of helping to make a difference or to find out more, contact us.